Hey everyone, how's it going? Michael back with you guys. I know it's been a while. I've been doing some traveling. I've had a hard time getting my setup situated once again to do some videos, but uh, I'm back here now. I'm organized and I'll be doing a bunch over the next couple of weeks. And to get started, I think a good one would be just to do a Q&A uh, discussing one of my latest videos on the Tracer desktop suite for the hardware wallet. I've had a bunch of questions on there and I want to address those today. All right, so let's get started. So the first question I have here is how do I store Cardano or Theta on my Tracer wallet? Okay, so if we go to our desktop suite here and I go to enable more coins, you can see that the desktop suite itself only supports a handful of tokens, right? But if you go to the website, you can see that there's over, you know, 1600 different tokens that Tracer supports. Now, if you want to store your Theta as an example, what you would have to do is go to Theta's web wallet and you would have to create a, a wallet here. And what you can do is you can link your Tracer or your Ledger devices directly on this wallet. So if it's not directly supported on the desktop suite, it doesn't mean that it's not supported. Uh, you just need to use a third party wallet to basically attach your Tracer uh, to the network. So that would be Theta. And then for Cardano, you would go to their uh, web wallet here. It's a light wallet and you would do the exact same thing. So you create a wallet and you would link your Tracer or your Ledger device uh, directly to it there. Um, so that's how you would link Theta and Cardano to your Tracer and store your tokens safely. Okay, so next question. How come when I have Ethereum on my Tracer suite, it does not show me all of the ERC20 tokens like your screen does? You have to add them in manually. And the answer to that question is, uh, yes, you do. Uh, so what you would do is you go to your dashboard here, you go to Ethereum, and then to the right side of trade here, you can see this uh, triple dot button. You'd hit add token. And this is where you would add your ERC20 token, right? So you'd find a token that you want to add uh, and you'd paste the contract address uh, in this box here and you would select add token. So uh, let's just find a random token here. Uh, let's see, ERC20 engine. Okay, let's type an engine here. There's the contract address. What we would do is you'd hit copy address here and we would paste it into our Tracer Suite. It's gonna highlight in green and then hit add token. It'll say token added. And if you scroll down, you'll see ERC20 tokens, right? I've already added Tether, USDC and Link. And now I've added uh, Eng, right? So that's how you would add an ERC20 token. Now these tokens are all certified through Etherscan. Uh, they're legit tokens, right? So I'm not too positive if uh, a brand new token that's been listed on Uniswap will have uh, full integration on the Tracer desktop suite. Uh, if you guys want, maybe do some digging on that. And if you can't add one of those new tokens, just post a comment down below in the section. And uh, I'll do some digging to see if there's any way that uh, those tokens can be added uh, as well. All right, next question. Does it support Tether or other stable coins? Uh, the answer is yes. Your Ethereum wallet will support any ERC20 token or any ERC20 stable coin uh, just by adding the token contract address like I've done here, right? Uh, and then all you would do is you would send your Tether or USDC from whatever wallet you have to your Ethereum wallet here that you have listed on your account section. And then once you do so, it would show up in your Ethereum wallet under tokens right here. Okay, so next question. If Tracer goes under as a company, would you still have access to your coins and your tokens? Okay, so this is a good question. So if Satoshi Lab is the parent company behind Tracer were to ever go under or uh, cease operations, you wouldn't just lose your coins and your tokens, right? Uh, you have your private key, right? Your private C that you have stored. What you would do is you'd input that private key into another compatible wallet and you'd have access to all of your coins, right? So since Tracer is compatible with a BIP32, BIP39 or BIP44 compatible wallets, you would just select one of those wallets, input your private key, and you'd have access to all of your tokens. Now, I don't recommend doing this unless it's absolutely necessary, right? Because now you're putting your private key with all of your tokens that, you know, was safely offline into an online wallet, right? So this would be uh, just basically saved for a last resort, okay? All right, so next question. Can any ERC20 token be sent to Tracer Suite using your Ethereum address? Um, like I said earlier in the video, um, basically any certified ERC20 token that uh, I think is on Etherscan and verified, you should be able to view it, no problem, on the desktop suite. Um, if you send an ERC20 token to your Ethereum address and it doesn't show up after you try to add the contract token, 
it's not lost. All you would do is you would access it through another website, right? So let's say you can't see it on your desktop suite. You would just go to a website like uh, myetherwallet.com. You would select hardware wallet. You hit Tracer. You would log in with your PIN unlocked on your device. You'd select your Ethereum address wallet, and you can add the contract token in uh, directly through there. So if I just hit Tracer here, hit continue, allow once, export, follow the instructions on my wallet, I unlock it. There we go. I don't have a passphrase for this device, so I just hit enter. And now you can see my addresses here. I would click, select the one that I'm currently using. And now basically it lets you log in and you can basically go down to tokens here, hit custom tokens. And this is where you would add your contract address, right? Uh, address, symbol, decimals, hit save, and then it'll pop up under your, uh, your balance section here for your tokens. And then if you wanted to send that, you would just send it directly like you normally would. Okay, and last but not least, guys, uh, the question I have left here is, could you please do a demo on how to exchange on Trader Suite? Okay, so for Ethereum right now, the Ethereum fees are absolutely insane on the blockchain because of the congestion. So I will not directly do a swap, but I'll show you how to do it itself. You would just go to trade and then go to exchange. And now you would select, you know, let's say I wanted to just transfer all of my Ethereum into another token, I could choose, you know, Bitcoin, Litecoin, for example, and now it'll show me the fee it's going to cost to do the transaction itself. That's the fee that they charge for the swap. And now I hit compare offers. And it'll show you how much Litecoin you're going to get in the swap. And you would just choose the deal that works best for you, right? Uh, the one where you'd probably get the most Litecoin and be charged the, the least amount of fees, right? Sometimes these swaps can cost a lot of money. So most of the time when I'm doing swaps, especially between ERC-20 tokens, if I can do it on a centralized exchange just quickly, um, I, I usually just do it that way because the fees are going to be a lot less than using a swap platform uh, to do it, right? Because they just charge a flat rate, right? And it could be it could be pretty large. Like if I go to back to accounts here, I go to Ethereum, trade, exchange, and I hit Ethereum to, let's say, another ERC-20 token, like Tether, I hit all. You can see that uh, 161.12, right? So I would be getting, I'd be, I'd be losing about 20 bucks on the transaction, right? Which is a lot. If I were to send this Ethereum to a centralized exchange, it would probably cost me two bucks to send it there or less. And then when I do the transaction on the exchange itself, it's probably 0.1% fee, right? So I'm probably only going to lose a few bucks versus losing 20. So just always keep that in mind, especially for a, a small transaction. You might be losing, you know, a ton of money on the fee itself. And I think that's all I have listed here, guys. So if you are enjoying the content that you guys are seeing, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any more comments or questions, I'll get to those as well in the comment section. And uh, thanks for watching today, and I'll see you guys in the next one.